Hello, this is Chris with LensRentals.com, and that was my cat. We've been researching the Canon 5D Mark III RAW hack a lot over the last few months and doing a lot of shooting with it, and we finally decided that it was stable enough to use for professional purposes. Uh, we've used it on some of our own shoots, and so we've started renting it. You've probably heard about this already. We did a blog post to try to introduce people to it that weren't already aware of it. And this video is kind of a companion piece to that. If you haven't already read the blog post, you should go read it on our blog. This video is just to walk you through using the camera from beginning to end so you can know a little bit of what you're getting into before you actually start working with it. This is by no means a very in-depth or comprehensive look at working with the camera, but just a starter's guide. When you get the hacked 5D3 from us, it'll look just like most other 5D3s, except for one difference. We include this memory card that already has the Magic Lantern firmware on it, and you'll need to leave that in the camera all the time. So first things first, you'll want to turn on the camera, set the dial on the top of the camera to M, then press the menu key. Once in the menu, Set it up however you normally would with the camera, except for a couple of differences. I'm going to want the image quality set at RAW. Move your record size, I'll set to 19, 20, 24, all I. Proceed to the fourth tab over. It's got a small picture of a wrench on it, and it's colored yellow. First you'll want to go to record function plus card slash folder select. The middle option chooses what card you're actually recording to. You'll need to set that to the compact flash card or else this isn't going to work. If you proceed to the next submenu, the first option will be auto power off. We need to disable this feature because when you're using the raw hack, the camera doesn't actually realize it's recording and will power off while you're shooting if you don't. Those are the key points to hit in the main Canon menu, but you can make any other changes that you like. The second thing you want to do is set up your overlays correctly. Press the info button four times to get to the right screen so that you can see all the magic lantern filters like zebras and histograms and things like that. Now press the trash can button. You should see a black magic lantern splash screen load with some white text. You'll press the set button to proceed past it. Once in the magic lantern menu, you'll want to go to the far right tab. It says modules. Magic Lantern comes with a core set of functions, but you can add additional features by loading extra modules. Below the line that says modules, you'll find the extra features loaded into the camera. They should already be there, but if they're not, all you have to do is hit load modules now. I recommend enabling auto load modules, and that way whenever you start up the camera, they'll already be there for you, and you can skip this step. Now jump on over to the movie tab. It's the fourth one from the right. Scroll down to raw video and set it to on. You can press Q to change some extra settings, but it should default to 1920 by 1080 and that's what we want to shoot. If you're interested in shooting dual ISO video or stills, go over to the exposure menu. It's the second from the right. Down towards the bottom, you'll find the dual ISO option. Press set to enable it and Q to change more options. To shoot a deflickered time lapse, first go to the exposure menu and enable auto ETTR. Then go to the shoot menu, it's the fifth one from the right. Once in the shoot menu, enable the post deflicker option. Then enable the intervalometer and press Q to set it to shoot pictures at whatever rate you'd like. After that, you just press the trash can to get out of the menu and the camera will start taking your pictures and make your time lapse. I've been shooting with a hacked 5D3 for a few months now, and I've never come across a problem that couldn't be fixed rather quickly. The most surefire way to fix any problem you're having, whether it be a locked up camera or otherwise, is just to take the battery out. Flip off the power switch, take the battery out, and just count to 10. Now, put the battery back in power on the camera, and you might have to set up Magic Lantern again, so go back to that trash can menu and have that in. The most common problem I had when shooting with the raw hack is that the camera keeps wanting to switch back to the SD card to store its files on. You can check this by looking at the top LCD and making sure that it's actually selected the compact flash card. If it hasn't, if it's switched back to the SD card, 
You'll just go back to that third menu where it says record function plus card slash folder select. And once again, in the middle option, select that compact flash card. That should get you going. If you'd like to play back the last clip you shot with the raw hack, just go to the movie menu and then into the raw video option by pressing Q. And the bottom option is playback and that'll play back the last clip that you just shot. The only problem with this is that it's slightly unstable and could crash the camera. Also, it can't play back the video at full speed, only at a very slowed down rate. So if you have a clip that is very long, it will take you a long time to watch it again. Remember, when in doubt, pull the battery out. So you've finished your shoot, hopefully everything went well, and now you've got a lot of footage to deal with. The post-production process for using these new Magic Lantern features can be a little bit challenging. Actually, it's changing all the time as the community is coming up with more and more programs, scripts, and other helpful ways to work with this stuff. So unfortunately, while I'd love to give you the definitive end-all be-all of post-production workflow, all I can do is give you a few tips that are relevant as of September 2013. If you'd like the most up-to-date information, I would recommend jumping on the Magic Lantern forum and seeing what people are working at. So if you've been shooting raw video, you're going to have a lot of these guys. They are .raw files, and as you can see, they're quite huge. There's actually a few ways of working with them. If you're in Microsoft Windows, an easy way is to get the raw 2 d and G program. It's free from the forum. There's a link below. Just take this raw file and drag it onto the raw to d and G program, and it'll get to work. That's one way to extract that .raw file. Another one, and actually my preferred method as a Windows user, is to use the rawizer. There's a link to find it actually at the bottom of this page, but you'll go here and download it. And it's a program that someone whipped up that will automatically do a batch process on them and will even create proxy files for you to edit with and things like that. I don't have a lot of experience with the Apple process myself, but I'm told that downloading raw magic from the App Store is the way to go. So if you download the raw magic app, it will place it in your dashboard, and then you'll just drag and drop those .raw files onto there. It'll queue them up, you click convert, and it'll output them to whatever directory you set it to automatically. Just a good batch processing program it looks like. It seems to work just fine in the limited amount of time I used it. Probably what I'd use if I was a Mac user. So it's several minutes later and now it is finished unpacking it to a DNG image sequence. As you can see, we still have the original raw file. So if you open up one of these DNG files, you'll see that they are actually the individual frames of your video. And the amazing thing is these are true raw files, just like the CR2 files that the 5D Mark III normally shoots for stills, but now for video and you get all that flexibility of raw, really fun stuff. But what do you do with these things? The first way we're going to talk about working with them is sending them through DaVinci Resolve. There is a light version available for free from Blackmagic Design's website. If you just go there and go to their download section, you'll be able to download DaVinci Resolve 9 Lite. And it's perfect for everything you'd want to do with the 5D Mark III. So it's going to pop up, ask you to make a user, be an admin, a guest, something like that. I'm just going to do guest for now. I'm going to make a new project called and once we've navigated to the directory where our footage is, that DNG sequence will be displayed as a clip and actually, it kind of scrolls through there, isn't that cool? Take this guy, drag him down into the media pool, and then you will go on into the color section and do your color grading and all that fun stuff. That'll be good. Make the footage look however you're going to want it to look. Then go to deliver. You want to get your settings right over here. Um, render to, file type, things like that, quick time. Uh, you know, DNX HD and ProRes are very popular ones. Your frame rate is going to be 23,976, not 24 frames a second. Select a render location where you want to send it to. Let's send mine to that place, I guess. And everything else here is looking pretty good. Just click Add Job. It's going to send it over here to your render queue. And you can add as many clips and things like that. Get them all set. Click start render. So that's a great free way to go. If you have Adobe products, you can actually jump into Adobe After Effects. Double click on project to import a file. And you will just import the first 
frame of that DNG sequence and make sure down here camera raw sequence is selected and import as footage is selected. When you open it up, it'll open ACR, uh, Adobe Camera Raw, automatically and you can make any adjustments you want to make to it. Uh, yeah, that's good enough for now. Click OK. Then you'll have this, which is your footage. It's uh, the image sequence listed as just a single file. You'll need to right click it and go into interpret footage and click main. Set the correct frame rate. And then you can just drag it onto the new comp icon. It'll make a new composition. Click add to render queue. And then set up your output module. That'll be file type and things like that. And then you would set where you want it to go to and click render. Next up is the dual ISO hack. And this thing is a whole lot of fun. You're gonna love it. So if you've already read the blog article or anything about the dual ISO hack, you know that when you take the pictures with it, it actually shoots at two different ISOs. Opening up this picture of this darling young man and his beloved hound, you can zoom in close and see that it's actually interlaced, alternating back and forth, but not really noticeable when you zoom all the way out. Still, that's not gonna help us much. What you gotta do is merge these. Before getting started with the dual ISO hack, you'll need to download a few files. You'll need CR2 HDR, DC RAW, and EXIF tool. We're gonna take that picture, put it into this program that they have called CR2 HDR, and when you drop it on there and do this work for a little while, there you go, and when it's done, it spits that DNG file. Open that up, and now you'll see that it appears really dark, really underexposed by comparison to what we were seeing right out of the camera. But if you will take this underexposed footage and start to lift it and bring it back, lo and behold, you'll find it to be extremely versatile and you can actually push it really far without seeing any substantial noise. And even better is the fact that this works for video too. You can get this kind of expanded dynamic range out of your video clips. Like I did this shoot with a Civil War reenactor and his lovely fiance. And as you can see right out of the camera after doing the merge, it is colossally underexposed, but push it back a little ways to where it should be. And now we have a very large dynamic range to work with when we're editing that footage. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the flicker-free time-lapse feature that uses sidecar files with a exposed to the right technique in order to equalize the exposure across an entire time lapse and smooth it out. A lot of times when shooting a time lapse, there'll be very small variations in exposure for one reason or another that'll cause some flickering. It's displeasing and just doesn't look very good. Using this new technique, you can actually smooth that out and then it looks just like regular video footage, except of course that it's blazing through time at a rate much faster than our own perception. For example, here is what I got right out of the camera when doing an ETTR time lapse. You can see lots of little exposure variations here and there. And then after putting it through the deflicker process, totally smoothed out. Before getting started with deflickered time lapses, you'll have to download the UF Raw utility. So we've got that time lapse right here. And what you've got to do is start by renaming all these files. You can do that with any kind of batch renaming software. Some of the Adobe products can do things like that. Uh, there's a lot of other programs that can too. If you don't already have one that can, you can find a good one on Google that's totally free. I recommend the bulk rename utility. But whatever you're using, you'll need to go in there and choose all of those sidecar files, which get spit out initially as UFR files. Choose all of those and rename them to UF Raw. Once you have those renamed to UF Raw files, you'll be able to run a batch process in order to deflicker the time lapse. And how you go about doing that is actually up to you. Depending on whether you are using a Mac or Windows, there are different ways of performing batch processes. I whipped up this one. It just references the location of the UF Raw program and then tells that program to run in this directory for all files with the .uf raw extension and output a JPEG. 
After that batch file completes, which will take a very long time, you'll have a new folder with a JPEG image sequence that you can then run through whatever kind of post-processing you'd like, or use something like QuickTime or W Premiere, After Effects, or Photoshop to turn it into a video file. As we said at the beginning of the video, this was just a very, very rough scratching of the surface, just showing you the basic beginning to end workflow with some of these things. So you can get an idea of what you're getting into before you actually place an order. If you have any more questions about these things, feel free to ask us in the comments below or shoot us an email at support at lensrentals.com or give us a call.